فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد This inshallah ta'ala is the second part on the explanation of the book Al-Qasida Al-Ha'iya fi Al-Zuhd wa Al-Targhib wa Al-Targhib li Shaykh Hafiz Ibn Ahmad Al-Hakami rahimahullahu ta'ala The author went on to say in rahimahullahu ta'ala فاسأل ربي أن يحول بحوله وقوته بيني وبين اغتيالها He says فأسأل ربي I ask my Lord الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يحول بحوله that Allah سبحانه وتعالى get in between me and this dunya before it destroys me that he doesn't subhanahu wa ta'ala leave this dunya for it to enter into my heart for me to love and appreciate this dunya that I become a person who you O Allah you divert from him the desires and the want of this dunya so the author here is making a dua and he's making a dua from this dunya and he's affirming that this dunya is one of the things that destroys a person. And when the dunya destroys a person, it does that by opening trials and tribulations on you. Fitan. There is no way to get out of it except to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to seek refuge in him from its fitna. As an Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, a chapter which he headed it, Babun chapter, fi ta'awwudhi min fitnati dunya, seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the trials of this dunya. And then Imam al-Bukhari straight away he brought the hadith of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that the messenger used to be one يعلمنا هؤلاء الكلمات He would teach us these words كما تعلم الكتابة The way he would teach us or the way that writing is learnt He would say to them this dua which is اللهم أو الله Inni a'udhu bika, I seek refuge in, in, in you. From what? Min al-bukhli, in being stingy. A person who doesn't want to give. Wa a'udhu bika, and I also, and I also seek refuge in you, O oh Allah, min al-jubni, in being a coward. coward. Cowardness is an illness. To be a coward is an illness. And also being stingy, is also a illness that a person needs to seek refuge in Allah from. It is not a good trait to be a stingy person. And it is also not a good characteristics and a good trait of a believer to be a coward. Also the Prophet went on to say, <coughs> وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. أَنْ أَرُدَّ إِلَىٰ أَرْضَ لِلْعُمْرِ أَمَا أَنْ أُرَدَّ Sorry. إلى أرض العمر أو الله I seek refuge for me to turn back in age and that's when the person he means by this when the person becomes so old that they become a child again in other words the person turns back on his age he's old in age but he does what children do this is called أرض للعمر أو الله I seek refuge in that age from you meaning oh Allah I want to die without needing anyone I want to die a death where I know what's around me. 
The Prophet used to seek refuge in Allah from this. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَوَ اللَّهَ I seek refuge in you مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَعَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ I seek refuge in, in you, O oh Allah, from the trials of this dunya and the punishment of the grave. So you can see in this had dua al nafi'ah al mubaraka this beneficial dua, this blessed dua, which is to seek refuge in Allah from the fitna of the dunya. Why is it that one needs to seek refuge from the fitna of this dunya? Is because the dunya will destroy you. It will annihilate you if Allah does not help you and aid you. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Ibn Umar said, قَلَّمَا كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُومُ مِنْ مَجْلِسٍ The Messenger was little. It was rare that he stood up from a gathering in which he was in. Except that he would make the following dua. He will say, اللَّهُمَّ اقْسِمْ لَنَا مِنْ خَشِيَتِكَ مَا تَحُولُ بِهِ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ مَعَصِيكَ <coughs> Allah distribute amongst us give us each and every one of us your fear place it in our hearts place enough fear for it to divert us and for it to distance us from committing sins a fear that allows us to run away from the sins مَا تُبَلِّغُنَا بِهِ جَنَّتَكَ That which will allow us to enter Jannah and reach the, the doors of Jannah. Oh Allah, give us obedience that, that will allow us to enter Jannah. وَمِنَ الْيَقِينِ And also give us certainty. <coughs> what certainty? مَا تُهَوِّلُ بِهِ عَلَيْنَا مُصَائِبَاتِ الدُّنْيَا أَمَا مُصِيبَاتِ الدُّنْيَا Oh Allah, give us certainty. That which will lessen for us the calamity of the dunya. Certainty, enough certainty that will lessen in our hearts and make it easy for us to endure the calamities of this dunya. وَمَتِّعْنَا بِأَسْمَاعِنَا Oh Allah, bless us and make us enjoy our hearing. وَأَبْصَارِنَا and our seeing. وَقُوَّاتِنَا and our strength. مَا أَحْيَيْتَنَا as long as we live. وَجِعَلْهُ الْوَارِثَ مِنَّا Make it that which is inherited minna from us. وَجِعَلْ Make our Allah ثَأَرَنَا عَلَى مَنْ ظَلَمَنَا Our Allah place destruction on the one who oppresses us. Deal with him. وَانْصُرْنَا And give us victory. عَلَى مَنْ عَادَانَا from the one who shows and expresses enmity to us. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ O Allah, do not make مُصِيبَتَنَا our calamities فِي دِينِنَا in our religion. وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا and do not make this dunya أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا our ultimate goal, our ultimate objective. Don't make it, O Allah. وَلَا مَبْلَغَ عِلْمِنَا and do not make this world our ultimate knowledge. That all we know is the dunya. وَلَا تُسَلِّطْ عَلَيْنَا And oh Allah, don't place over us. And don't afflict us with. مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمُنَا One that doesn't have no mercy to us. Don't place over us a leader or an individual in charge of our affairs who has no mercy for us. Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrated this. And Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah in the ta'liq which he has on the book Al-Kalim Al-Tayyib written by Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Shaykh Al-Albani graded it to be Hassan This hadith narrated from Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that I just mentioned shows that the Prophet never left a gathering I'm a little, I'm a rare was that he left a gathering except يدعو بها أولائي الدعوات He would make these supplications he would make this dua and he would call on to Allah by saying this. 
and also from the du'as that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make was he used to say Allahumma O Allah Islih li deeni Correct my religion for me Perfect my religion for me Alladhi huwa ismatu amri In which my prosperity and my goodness is connected to Waslih li dunyaya And O oh Allah Also correct and perfect my worldly affairs for me التي فيها معاشي which my life is connected to وأصلح لي آخرتي and oh Allah perfect my hereafter for me التي فيها معادي which my turning back is وجعل الحياة زيادة لي في كل خير oh Allah make this world which I am living in today a place where I increase in good that I use this world as a provision in which I I work hard for the hereafter. Make it for me. وَجَعَلِ الْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لِي مِنْ كُلِّ شَرْ And also, O oh Allah, make death raha. Something which I don't feel pain or agony regarding it. From all evil. This is the du'as that the messenger used to make. And my brothers, du'a is miftahu kull khair. Every good that you see, the key to it is what? A dua supplication and calling on to Allah. Ikhwani, dua is miftahun najah. It's the key of success and prosperity. And that is why it's upon every one of us and yuqbila ala Allah that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in supplication. And that's why the author made that dua. The author made this dua. He called on to Allah by saying, فَأَسْأَلُ Rabbi, I ask my Lord. أَنْ يَحُولَ بِحَوْلِهِ وَقُوَّتِهِ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ اغْتِيَالِهَا That I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he diverts this dunya from it causing me any trials or tribulations, it destroying my hereafter affairs. So this is a tariqa nabawiyyah, it's a prophetic path in which the author rahimahullah took. Then the author rahimahullah he said, فَيَا طَالِبَ الدُّنْيَا الدَّنِيَةِ جَاهِدًا أَلَطْلُبْ سِوَاهَا إِنَّهَا لَا وَفَاءَ لَهَا فَكَمْ قَدْ رَأَيْنَا مِنْ حَرِيصٍ وَمُشْفِقٍ عَلَيْهَا فَلَمْ يَذْفَرْ بِهَا أَنْ يَنَالَهَا He said, فَيَا طَالِبَ الدُّنْيَا الدَّنِيَةِ جَاهِدًا O oh, you individual who has put all of his efforts on his hard work and all that he's looking for is what? الدُّنْيَا الدَّنِيَةِ All that you're looking for is this pathetic world. This world that doesn't have no value or no, no importance. This low ranked thing is what you run after. You've placed all of your time, you, all of your aspiration and all of your drive, this dunya. And you have faced this dunya with every energy and every brain cells that you have in your mind, you've directed it towards this dunya. He says to you, أَلَطْلُبْ سِوَاهَا Go and look for other than it. Look for what? أَيِّ الْآخِرَةِ The opposite of it which is the hereafter. Don't be from the people of this world. Be from the people of the hereafter. فَلَا تَكُنْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا وَكُنْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْآخِرَةِ Do not be from the people of this world. But rather be from the people of the hereafter. How can one be from the people of the hereafter, my beloved brothers and sisters? The way a person can be from the people of the hereafter is بطلب العلم, seeking knowledge, gaining knowledge, التفقه في الدين, having understanding of the religion, and also directing yourself, والإقبال على طاعة رب العالمين, directing yourself in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Man humani la yashba'ani. Two individuals who are thirsty and hungry never get filled. Sahibul ilm, a person of knowledge. A person who's trying to attain knowledge never gets full. Because knowledge doesn't finish, it doesn't have a point where it finishes. Al Imam Malik, Al Imam Ahmad, it was seen at a very old age, he was carrying inks and he was carrying scrolls. And so they said to him, Ila mata ya Aba Abdullah. Aba Abdullah, for how long are you going to 
carry on seeking knowledge and how, how, for how long are you going to be writing? Is there, is there not a time where you say, enough, I have learned as much as I needed to. Al-Imam Ahmed understood the reality of knowledge. So what did he say? He responded by saying, Min al he said, Min al he said, Min al from the cradle to the grave, he said. From the cradle to the grave. From the day I was born till the day I die, I'm still going to be gaining and increasing and seeking knowledge. I will not stop. Sometimes you hear, due to the ignorance of some people, they say to you, I've learned enough. I've learned all that which I needed to learn. There's nothing more which I need to learn. All that shows to us is this person hasn't truly understood knowledge. Ya Akhi, one of the things I benefited, a statement that I benefited from Sheikh Abdul Karim Al Khudair, he said, Let alone saying that knowledge, you've learnt it all. If you today sit down and you say, I'm going to follow up the works of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin alone, you will die and you still haven't finished it. Just one, one man's work. If you sit down today and you say, I'm going to go after Ibn Uthaymin alayhi rahmatullahi's works, books that he's published, and I'm going to give my time to that, you will die and not have finished it. Let alone be able to read every book that there is. So knowledge is something, I'm a person who's trying to gain knowledge, will die and he still is running after it. The second one Abdullah ibn Mas'ud mentioned is وَصَاحِبُ dunya. This world, no one ever died and said, I have finished this dunya. It's, that's it, I didn't need anything more. People die and they are still saying more. No, but there's this, I had to do this. No, 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 I had to finish off this. But that is sometimes people say, you know, I want to seek knowledge, I want to gain knowledge. So you say, Akhi, leave. He'll say, no, I can't leave now because I'm waiting for this and I'm waiting for this. Dunya will never let go of you. The only way is to get up and leave. People who are addicted to things, you tell them stop. They'll say, no, no, I'll stop inshallah next year. This is my plan. That person will never stop. The dunya is one thing you have to understand is that you will never, ever, ever get to the bottom of it. And that is why the messenger said, alayhi salatu was salam, la yamla'u batun ibn adam, nothing fills the stomach of the children of Adam illa turab, except the sand. From the day you were born till today, how much food have you eaten? Why don't you just stop now? Why are you still eating for? Look at what you do. You actually get rid of what you eat, you ate, and you're looking for more, and you're looking for more. Dunya is like that. It will never finish, and you will never get to the bottom of it. So he said, مَنْ هُمَانِ لَا يَشْبَعَانْ صَاحِبُ الْعِلْمِ وَصَاحِبُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَسْتَوِيَانِ But they are no, they, even that though they share, they share one thing, which is both of them never get to the bottom of what they're looking for. Both of them never get to their fill. But they are not the same. He said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, وَلَا يستويان. They are both not the same. أَمَّا صَاحِبُ الْعِلْمِ As for the person of knowledge, فَيَزْدَادُ رِضَ الرَّحْمَانِ He increases. He increases in the things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَمَّا صَاحِبُ الدُّنْيَا Pay attention. They are both running after what? To increase, right? The person of knowledge is increasing in pleasing Allah. وَأَمَّا صَاحِبُ الدُّنْيَا As for the person of the dunya, فَيَتَمَادَى فِي الطُّغْيَانِ He is only increasing in transgression and exceeding his limits. And then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud recited, he recited the following verse, كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرَّآهُ أَرَّآهُ اسْتَغْنَى And he also recited the other verse in support of the people of knowledge. What did he say? إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Then the author went on to say, إِنَّهَا لَا وَفَاءَ لَهَا This world will not fulfill a promise it made to you. No, it wouldn't. It will make you happy today. It will make you laugh today. But how soon is it that you're going to cry? You see four or five people sitting in a room, 
They are laughing with each other. They are enjoying time with each other. It's a matter of days when they depart from one another. One passes away and that laugh turns into a cry. It turns into sadness. Where did that happiness go? Why? The world will fool you. It will trick you in making you think that that is what it's all about. That laughing and that playing is what it's all about. But the truth of the matter is, it won't keep you in that consistent, it won't keep you consistent in that situation which you're in. And that's why Allah says in the Quran, Mata'ul Ghurur. It's a joy, but it's deceptive. It's like a mirage on a sunny day when you're driving on the road, you think there's water in front of you, and as you try to get there, it just keeps getting going further and it gets further and keeps and you're driving faster and faster. It's moving even more away from you. This world is a ghurur, deception. It fools you. It doesn't fulfill a promise that it's made to you. فَكَمْ قَدْ رَأَيْنَا مِنْ حَرِيصٍ وَمُشْفِقٍ عَلَيْهَا He says, how much people have we seen who have busied themselves with this dunya, the glitters and the glamours of this dunya, from what? From the worshipping of Allah. From coming with that which was made obligatory on them, they became busy with the dunya. They got busy from what? Coming with righteous actions. Getting closer to Allah. Stacking righteous actions. They are, as I said yesterday, they are himarun bin nahar. Daytime they are donkeys. They wait, the way that a donkey, things can be put on the donkey. And the donkey will carry it. And the donkey will not complain. And the donkey is an animal that works very hard. A donkey is stronger than a horse. It's used. Things are put. People move from one place to another. Some people are like that. They work like a donkey. And at night, what do they do? So all day he's working like a donkey. He doesn't worship Allah. And at night he is what? He's jeeful bin nahar. He's like a corpse, a dead animal. He doesn't wake up at night. When he tosses and turns in bed, he doesn't do his dhikr. He doesn't pray for qiyam. He doesn't get up for qiyam layl is jifun bin nahar alimun bin dunya if you speak with him and you ask him questions he will break down this world and it's in the internal affairs of it he will break it down in a manner in a manner and a way that will leave your mind boggled ajeeb he knows the tafasi he knows the details matters pertaining you ask him today Akhi, I've just come into the UK, what shall I do? He'll say, this form is called this. This is where you have to go. You have to hand it in this day. This is the time that they open. This is the time that they close. This is how. You, this is the bus that you take. This is what the person you're going to meet. This is the questions that they're going to ask you. Tafasil, detailed matters. The way he breaks it down to you. Are you with me? Tata'ajab. Alimun bil dunya. Jahilun bil akhirah. You ask him the affairs of the hereafter. You ask him ahkam pertaining to the most basic things of the religion, you find that he was, he's lost of words or he doesn't even know what it is. When he prays and you look at him praying that same individual, the things which he knows, that knew the dunya, if you look at him pray today, one of the things, subhanAllah, is, and I said this, it was a, I was in college and I was studying business. I was studying business. And... They brought us to uh, the Coca-Cola factory, you see, and they were teaching us about the matters pertaining to business. So the, the, the guy that came to us was the, the guy who was the head of the hygiene of Coca-Cola and he was telling us how important the hygiene in is and the role that he plays. And He's the guy who runs the whole project. He's the one who runs the whole uh, the hygiene side of Coca-Cola. Pay attention to this. So what happened? Qadrullah wa ma sha'a fa'al. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines and plans what he wants. It ended up that I and he had to go for call of nature. So he went in and I went in. And when we both came out, Qadarullah, I went and washed my hands. Used my soap, washed my hands, used the tissue. This individual had used the toilet. We just came out together and he walked out. Alim, the basic thing, hygiene that you are, the head of. You've got urine, the minimum is urine what you've done. For sure you didn't use water. Using tissue, is it enough? It's questionable. I don't really believe personally that it's enough. That being said, of course I'm talking about if the person is doing number two, but if the person is doing urine labas, you can use tissue. That being said, you're the head of the hygiene department. But you don't know the basic things of tahara. 
Alimun ya ikhwan bi dunya. This man, he probably can break down the different types of germs there are. You see how they all work and what not. But here it is. This man doesn't know tahara. In the sense where the most basic stuff. And this is something, ya ikhwah, if you look at our ulama and our scholars, you find the opposite from them. It was mentioned in the biography of Al-Allama, Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiyatiyu Rahimahullah, that he would go to the market with money in his hands. Ya ikhwah, Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiyati was a walking encyclopedia. Ya ikhwah, the things that Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiyati memorized and the things that was in his head, today no one has come anywhere close to it. If you read the tarjama that Khalid Uthman al Sept has placed regarding Muhammad al Amin al Shanqirti in the beginning of his kitab, Adbu al Namir, which is a majalis of tafsir, what he used to give, all of that was from the top of his head. He would bring shawahid, poetry from the pre Islamic. He would bring it from Imru Uqais, Antara bin Shuddad, Zuhair bin Abi Sulma. He would use lines from the Mu'alaqat al Sab'ama, Mu'alaqat al Ashara. He would bring shawahid from many shawahid, he would always bring it from Abdullah. Uh, Al-Shanqita Rahimahullah's Kitab Maraqi Su'ud Li Mubtaghir Ruqi Wa Su'ud All of that from the top of his head He Al-Shaykh Bakr Abu Zayd said about him And even Abd Karim Al-Khudayr He does a ta'aliq on Kitab Adwa Al-Bayan It's on YouTube You can listen to it Listen to the muqaddima When the first lesson Abd Karim Al-Khudayr Talks about the biography of Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqita He says Kaad an yahfada lisan al-Arab he, was, he would read Lisan, Lisan al-Arab is the, va, the biggest dictionary the Arabs use. Biggest. Okay. He, he was close to memorizing. Like literally he had it in his head. And you see that from him. The way that when he talks, he defines the words. You, he, if you look at his tafsir, which is tafsir Adwa'u uh, al-Bayan, fi idah al-Qur'an bil-Qur'an, and you compare it to kitab ahkam al-Qur'an written by Imam al-Qurtubi, is roughly the same in the sense where he brings so much of the views of his. All of that from this what he said. That man with that knowledge of the religion, that great noble Imam, he said, I read, pay attention. He said, No one ever taught me Ilm al Mantiq. No one taught me. He said, I read it and he wrote a thousand lines of poetry in Ilm al Mantiq. Muhammad His mind and his brain was profound, profound, unprecedented. He, might, he shocked everybody. And he's the teacher of who? Abd Aziz ibn Abbas. This is it's his teacher. The point being, he would go to a market. He, had, he has money in he, he would carry money with him. He would go to the market. He would buy what he wanted. And he would open his palm and he would say to the, the owner of the market shop, he would say, take whatever is yours. Take whatever money is yours. The reason he would say that is because they said he did not know the different types of money there were. He didn't know it. So he would give it. Walidari Kaz Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin, he said, When I came to Riyadh, I left, I left Qasim ibn Uthaymin. When he left Qasim, who did he leave behind? He left his teacher, Abdul Rahman Nasr Sa'di. He said, I had this man. He said, I moved to Riyadh. When I moved to Riyadh, ibn Uthaymin is saying this. I ended up coming to an Jamaat al school Jamaat al Riyadh at that time. Ma'had, it was a Ma'had. He said, I enrolled when it first got opened, and the teachers that were teaching there, one of the teachers was who? Muhammad al Amin al Shanqirti. He said, I was in the class, and Muhammad al Amin al Shanqirti walked in. He said, When I saw him, Ibn Uthaymin is saying this, when I saw him, he said, I as an individual said, why did I leave my teacher behind? Why did I leave Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudi for a man whose appearance is like this? Muhammad al-Amin al-Shaqir's appearance was not attractive. He said, but when he spoke, and when he went into the lesson, he said, I never saw the likes of what this man was saying ever being said by anybody. The things that Muhammad al-Amin al-Shaqir was coming out with, the durar, the gems in which he was saying, so they don't, Ahlul Ilm, they didn't give importance to their manzar, their appearance and how they look. They were ignorant in regards to their, hera, their dunya affairs. Are you there? You find scholars can't use phones properly. You find that that happens. They have cars. You see, there's buttons they've never ever used in the car. You see, there are simple stuff that you look at them and say, Ya Sheikh, did you not know this? They'll come in to the lesson not looking appealing or sharp. No. 
clothes, the is there, you know, the hats are all over the place. They'll come not sharp. Why? Because the dunya holds value to you. That's why you're perceiving him. He doesn't see it like that. Nowadays, if you look at the du'at and the talabatul ilm, the biggest thing that a person has to do if he wants to do da'wah today, he has to look sharp. He has to give a lot of importance to his worldly affairs. Or else he'll say, people won't take me serious. In akasitil mawazin. The scaling has actually become what? And maybe because of that, maybe, Allahu alam, maybe because of that, the barakah of our knowledge and our educate and our teaching, maybe that is why it went. The barakah maybe went because of that. Then the author says, فَلَمْ يَضْفَرْ بِهَا أَنْ يَنَالَهَا This person who was striving so hard, who was giving everything to this dunya, who was working, 9 to 5 job, comes, when he comes home, all he's talking to his wife about is the money that he made, and how much he's expecting, and the calculation, and what not. All of this he's doing, the sheikh says, فَلَمْ يَضْفَرْ بِهَا أَنْ يَنَالَهَا Whatever you gained, and you think you gained, فَسَيَدْهَبُ It will go. That issue that you thought, oh I got it, it will go. How many businessmen who reached the pinnacle of money and richness, they were filing bankruptcy, filing for bankruptcy. The reason is because this is the sunnah, this is the way of this dunya. That's how it works. It comes and it goes. Now if it doesn't go whilst you're alive, then guess what? You're making and you're stacking this money for somebody after you who's going to benefit from it. You're working for somebody else, really. This house that you've built and this money you've put into it, it's going to be inheritance. People are going to sit down and inherit. Your children are going to inherit it. You're working for your children in the sense where this is only theirs. But you've got nothing for the hereafter. And they're not going to help you in the hereafter. They're going to run away from you, these children that you're giving it to. They're going to run away from you. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ so this wealth is going to go. Your wife, after a period of time, after mourning and crying and screaming and the pain, she's going out there to look beautiful to get married. She's gone. She moves on in her life. Wallahi, I, by, by Allah, I say this. I remember a sister who her husband died 10 years ago. And she said to me, she said to me, one sometimes what will happen to me is I would actually forget his name. She'll forget the name of her ex-husband who died. Gone. She, she told, I said it's because of the fact that you didn't love him or anything. She said, Wallahi, I loved him. But I took something from that. The thing that's going to help you is what have you placed and what have you put for the hereafter. If that's your wife who right now wouldn't want anybody except you when, you, when you're alive, she will do everything for you as she says right now. When you die, she will move on and get married. If that's your wife, then what do you expect from somebody who's not related to you? You're just, just friends that you call them friends. So these speeches that the Sheikh is saying, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and these statements here, they are all, it comes from a person who has truly understood the reality of this dunya. A person who's truly understood what the Quran and the Creator has said about this dunya. But if a person doesn't know all of that, he gets deceived. He falls in it. He falls in it. Inshallah ta'ala, my beloved brothers and sisters, we're going to stop there. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to carry on the remaining parts tomorrow, bi'idhni lail kareem. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.